He did all he could do with what he was given. And he left it here for us to enjoy. Chad will live forever. Turns out that Bozeman and Denzel were destined to be on each other's paths to success. In the 1990s, Denzel actually donated money to Howard University so theater students could take a prestigious summer course. It ends up that one of those students was Chadwick. Bozeman, for his part, was pretty vocal about Denzel's instrumental role in his life becoming what it did, and he said it in the coolest way possible. Imagine receiving the letter that your tuition for that summer was paid for and that your benefactor was none other than the dopest actor on the planet. Denzel, however, seems to believe he was just playing a part in a story that was larger than himself. There are always those that came before. There wouldn't be a Denzel without a Sydney, or a Sydney without a James Edwards, or James Edwards without a whoever the, the guy was back then. It's our job to pass the baton. Over the years, the entertainment industry has been no stranger to tragedy, with reports of celebrities, including singers and artists, passing on in the most mysterious ways. While many of these gone heroes were fighting battles behind closed doors, the world assumed that the glamour from the red carpet was a representation of their life. Sadly, we were wrong more often than not. And this was also the same case with Chadwick Boseman, the actor who became a monument for the black community and the world at large, even before his passing, was known to have tight relationships with several people in Hollywood, but it seems one of his strongest and least spoke about bonds was with veteran actor Denzel Washington. Denzel, who Bozeman described as the dopest actor on the planet, seems to have been something of a father figure to the 21 Bridges actor in the industry. This became clear after some of the last speeches Bozeman made before he passed started to go viral on social media, and people, upon hearing just how highly Bozeman placed Denzel, were gushing. Not just that, it also seems like the respect and love Bozeman expressed for Denzel was not one-sided, as the Equalizer actor also got in his feelings while his former protege talked about him to the world. The whole expression with the stars has been getting several reactions from the public, with some thinking of it as sweet and others believing Denzel's public reaction came too late. However, the one clear thing is that Bozeman's life in the media doesn't even make up half of who he was and what he experienced while coming up in the industry. So if you're looking to see what happened behind the drapes with the 42 actor, stay tuned. Um, and I and I've basically been holding this secret in my, my whole career. Uh, when I came back, um, I got a beneficiary letter and it said, Denzel Washington paid for you. There's almost no one out there who can say they haven't heard the story of how Chadwick Boseman became an iconic figure in Hollywood. From delivering stellar performances in scenes of Marvel's Avengers to starring in his own superhero movie franchise, Boseman had one of the most meteoric rises to the top of his game. However, the sad part of this story is that his rise came late into his time in the industry. The thing is most people assume that because he had success in all his Marvel-themed movies, he'd been successful in all his industry endeavors through the years, but that was far from the case. In fact, the only reason the actor even made it far enough to grace our screens in the superhero franchises he had roles in all traces back to Denzel Washington's generosity, and it was Bozeman himself that confirmed it. Now, we all know Denzel has established himself as one of the greatest forces of the film industry in the present age. And while you would expect him to not exactly be a people person because of all the fame and fortune that's come with his rise in the industry, the actor has pretty much dedicated his life to getting other talents out in Hollywood. The only reason we just never seem to hear about it is that the actor made his anonymity the top priority through the years. But Bozeman wasn't going to let the actor's good work stay in the shadows, as he is living proof of his goodwill. At the AF FI Lifetime Achievement Award event in 2019, Bozeman delivered a moving speech saluting Washington, who once paid his tuition for a summer acting program while Bozeman was attending Howard University. Many of you already know the story that Mr. Washington was asked by Felicia Rashid to join her in assisting nine theater students from Howard University who had been accepted to a summer acting program at the British Academy of Dramatic Acting in Oxford, Bozeman said in his tribute. Many of you already know the story that Mr. Washington, when asked by Felicia Rashad, to join her in assisting nine theater students from Howard University. He gracefully and privately agreed to contribute. As fate would have it, I was one of the students that he paid for. Imagine receiving the letter that your tuition for that summer was paid for and that your benefactor was none other than the dopest actor on the planet. Footage of Bozeman giving a powerful commencement speech at his alma mater has gone viral in the wake of his death. There is no Black Panther without Denzel Washington, Bozeman continued in his AFI address. And not just because of me, but my whole cast. That generation stands on your shoulders. 
the daily battles won, the thousand territories gained, the many sacrifices you made for the culture on film sets through your career, the things you refused to compromise along the way, laid the blueprints for us to follow. Offering from a sage and a king is more than silver and gold. It is a seed of hope, a bud of faith. There is no Black Panther without Denzel Washington. Suffice it to say the actor's speech had people deep in their feelings, and many have not been shy to talk about it. One person wrote, What the F is going on with me? I'm like tearing up here. That was the most eloquent, inspirational, motivational, and bad A at, at speeches I'd heard at that time and beyond. Chadwick was a treasure. Another user wrote, I needed to hear that we do have angels on earth and amp, in heaven paving the way for black excellence by knocking down doors and amp, breaking windows to opportunities beyond our ancestors' wildest dreams and amp hope. Besides following the blueprint that was laid down for him and also helping others to that path, Bozeman also made it a point to lead a life that would stay in the history books forever. Ever. For starters, one of the most well-known things about the actor's legacy is the fact that he constantly made it a point to visit hospitals because of his superhero identity at the time. What most people didn't know at the time, however, is that the actor had been fighting some serious battles behind closed doors. And I came in and, and he, he came and he hugged me. It's like literally, I think it's the best response I've ever gotten as far as, as, far as the character goes. So. Thank you. <laughs> in fact, when Matt Maggard, father to Hayden Maggard, a boy Bozeman had visited at the hospital while he was still alive, read on August 28, 2020 that the actor was living with cancer when he'd met with their son, he started to cry. Nobody understands unless they've been there and how hard it is to go to St. Jude and see these kids in that state. And I mean, for a normal, healthy human being to go there and take the tour, it's got to be shocking, Matt said. But for somebody who's already been diagnosed and going through treatment for two years, to go and face that, I mean, that's just incredible. Bozeman grew up in Anderson, South Carolina, with his two older brothers and his mom, a nurse, and dad, who worked for an agriculture conglomerate and had an upholstery business. Their family home was lined with books about culture and history. Bozeman would thumb through their collection of encyclopedias to teach himself about people of color who inspired him. He was 12 when he first read his older brother's copy of the autobiography of Malcolm X. Bozeman was an artist, gifted at drawing and sculpting, and he was a competitive basketball player always trying to beat his oldest brother Derek at sports. He also idolized his brother Kevin, who did dance and acting. He loved to sing. We sang together. Um, he was just full of passion. He loved people. He loved kids. Uh, he loved his family. He'd sit with his mother in the back of the theater, watching Kevin perform, and fell in love with theater himself. When a basketball teammate died his senior year, Bozeman channeled his feelings into a play he wrote. Bozeman went to Howard University, where he was a star student in the directing program. He wrote two plays while in school, including Hieroglyphic Graffiti, a hip-hop-infused modern telling of an ancient myth. He knew who he was. He had a very strong identity. He was very knowledgeable about the history of African Americans and African civilization, says Professor Vera Katz, who was Bozeman's advisor. He was very proud of who he was. Bozeman was a directing major, but took an acting workshop with Felicia Rashad, whom he impressed enough to make a move that would change his life forever. She encouraged him to audition for a summer acting program at Oxford and asked Denzel Washington to help fund him. Speaking of, it seems the actor might have influenced who he became beyond just the financial aspect, but we'll pick that back up. From Oxford, Bozeman decided to pursue acting more seriously, which took him to New York City after graduation. His parents supported him through film school and covered his rent when he couldn't in those early days. Early in his acting career, he found himself cast in a few soap episodes as a young man who joined a gang. Bozeman felt uneasy about what seemed like it could be a cynical, stereotypically written character. So when the network execs brought him in to talk about doing more episodes, he took the opportunity to ask about the character's backstory. He asked about the man's parents. Execs told him the character's father left when he was young and that his mother was addict. That week, Bozeman was let go. His agent told him he seemed difficult to the execs. Sometimes you need to get knocked down before you can really figure out what your fight is, Bozeman said when he later recounted the story during a Howard commencement speech and how you need to fight it. From that point on, Bozeman was picky. He would choose characters who he was proud to play characters who were socially significant, men who made a difference. It would be years before it paid off, but it finally did when he was cast as the lead, the great Jackie Robinson in 42. If we're around here assuming that the black characters in the show are criminals, on and deadbeat parents, 
then that would probably probably be stereotypical. He learned how to play baseball. He learned how to dance, embodying James Brown in Get On Up. From there, he became the first African-American on the Supreme Court in Marshall, and then came T'Challa. Even when he was playing a superhero, Bozeman fought to make T'Challa human, starting with his accent. Marvel reportedly wanted the character to have an English or American accent, but Bozeman insisted he have an African one. It felt to me like a deal breaker, he told The Hollywood Reporter. I was like, no, this is such an important factor that if we lose this right now, what else are we going to throw away for the sake of making people feel comfortable? The movie quickly went on to become the highest ever grossing superhero movie in the US. Bozeman had never been more in demand, but he kept choosing projects, his stories, carefully. You become more and more selective because you realize how much it takes out of you, Bozeman told Hunger Magazine in 2017. Some days you come home and you realize there's this extra psychological energy that you've been using to stay in that place for an entire day. You feel the fatigue of carrying around this other way of thinking, this different body, this different life. It can be emotional, it can be physical, and sometimes there's a little bit of trauma with that. He added that, by the end of the process, you just want to get to the place where you're no longer carrying the weight of that person. So, when you choose the roles, I think you're very selective about it because you value your time on this earth. It's so valuable because you're spending four or five or six months with this character, if not longer. You make those choices very, very carefully. See, just like Bozeman was locked in on rewriting the stereotype about black people, Denzel seems to have been fighting that fight long before he came into the picture. In fact, it seems that may have been one of the many lessons Bozeman picked up from. Over the years, Washington has been pretty vocal about some of the race-related problems he experienced on his way to the big leagues. From being passed up at some of the biggest award shows because of his race, to getting discriminated against while shooting a movie in his own country, to being referred to as A.N. they couldn't K, Washington has seen it all. I got a part in a movie in 1986. I called it the they couldn't kill. Oh. <laughs> Washington, who filmed his hit movie The Equalizer in the Boston area, and has even said he had a good time filming there in 2013, but during a press conference at the Toronto Film Festival a year later, he recalled a previous trip to the city that took a very ugly turn, according to Hollywood Reporter. Per the news, when the conversation during an interview turned toward Boston, Washington told a story about how about 30 years ago, he and his wife were in town for a play Pauletta was in, and at their hotel a group of people presumed the couple for a pimp and the situation escalated into a fight and security was called. Washington also said that while walking to his wife's show one night, he was called the N-word. Hey, n n n n hey boy. I was like, damn. That was the taste I had about Boston, he said. However, even before that experience, the actor had already felt the burnt of racism several times in the past. In fact, just like his protege, Bozeman, he also became selective about the movies he was in after a dark experience. In a 2012 Times Talk interview that most people just caught up to, Washington claims he turned down the chance to act in a film despite providing him a hefty salary. Taking advice from a Hollywood icon, Denzel said Sidney Poitier warned it would change his brand as an actor. According to reports, Washington stated to the interviewer that the role and synopsis would only perpetuate racism in the name of comedy. In his words, I got a part in a movie in 1986. I call it the end they couldn't K. The character, white woman. They tried to electrocute him, but it didn't work, and he became a cult hero. Then they tried to hang him. Washington added that some executives thought it was funny, and then he made an example putting them in the very position they wanted him and them agreeing that it was certainly not. They said, no, it's funny. It's like they hang him and then they can't. I said, yeah, like you bring some Jewish people into a room and you and you and they think it's a shower, but it's gas. Oh. And they said, right. I said, right, that ain't funny. I called Sidney Portier and told him, man, they are offering me $600,000 to play the end they couldn't K. And he told me, I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I will tell you this, the first two, three, four films you do in this business will dictate how you are perceived. Looks like Bozeman might have also taken a page out of that book, seeing as he also paid attention to the type of message the movies he was in were passing. Speaking of Bozeman, while the actor was vocal about a lot of issues, what he didn't say was that a year before that 27 interview about being choosy on what type of movies he accepts, somewhere between James Brown and Thurgood Marshall, he'd been diagnosed with colon cancer. Very few knew. Bozeman didn't want people to worry about him, said his oldest brother Derek. When you read back through interviews now, it's clear how little Bozeman actually revealed about his private life. It wasn't just his illness he kept to himself. He kept his warm, observational sense of humor to himself. In 2018, at the height of Black Panther mania, Bozeman returned to Washington, D.C. to receive an honorary doctorate and delivered
deliver the commencement speech at his alma mater, Howard University. He was a few minutes late starting, because as he got to the stage, one of the trustees' kids was staring in awe. So Bozeman suggested they take one last picture. Coming home was always nerve-wracking for him. The night before Howard President Wayne A.I. Frederick and Bozeman went out for dinner, and Frederick pointed out to Bozeman that Jackie Robinson, who Bozeman played in his breakout role in 42, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. both received honorary degrees from Howard on the same day. He took a lot of pride in it, Frederick says. Through that conversation, I learned he was a writer as well, and that he had written a lot. I think that also gave him a perspective of being very, very thoughtful and intentional about doing the right things around how he portrayed people who, as he felt, were representing his own heritage. Later that year, Bozeman began preparing for 21 Bridges, an action movie about the hunt for two men who kept police officers in a heist. He wasn't playing an icon this time, but Bozeman was a producer, working with director Brian Kirk to give depth and nuance to a genre film. Bozeman had a hand in shaping many of the characters he played, but now he was getting the credit for it. From 21 Bridges, Bozeman went into the filming for Spike Lee's Da Five Bloods in Thailand. Bozeman plays an integral role in the epic Storm and Norman, a fallen Vietnam soldier who was the core of his squad. On his first day on set, Bozeman filmed one of the most important scenes, an emotional moment of forgiveness between Bozeman and Delroy Lindo's characters. Bozeman came completely prepared, and in between takes remained laser-focused. And when he wasn't filming, he bonded with the rest of the cast. When temperatures soared past 100 degrees, Bozeman and his partner Taylor Simone Ledward brought super soaker water guns to set one particularly balmy afternoon. It was their idea to ambush Spike with the water Lindo said in a Facebook post. If he was sick, he wasn't letting it take his joy for living. It was also a great example of how effortlessly and organically Chadwick became one of us, one of the bloods in the acting company. Through surgeries and chemotherapy treatments, work continued. At the end of his life, Bozeman was filming the adaptation of playwright August Wilson's Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Denzel Washington, who funded Bozeman's trip to Oxford decades ago, is the producer. With his producing partner Logan Coles, Bozeman was working on the story of Yasuke, Japan's first black samurai. As Bozeman shot to the highest levels of fame, he remained close with his family, who say the attention never went to his head. He remained the same person privately. He remained the same person. Everybody calls him Chadwick, but to us he was Chad, Derek says. Chadwick is his given name, but it's like Chadwick was the Hollywood person, but Chad never changed. To this day, Bozeman's life has remained a beacon to several people both within and outside the industry, and from the looks of it, that legacy will probably last forever. That's it for this video, goodbye.